Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at the study guide for the second part of Chapter 4. So Section 4.5, Solving Quadratic Equations by Taking Square Roots. First, we're going to simplify the square roots or the square root expression completely. All right, so number one, square root of 250. Remember, no decimal answers are allowed. So we need to break the 250 into two numbers. One of them needs to be a perfect square. And, one, and you need to use the biggest perfect square. So the 250 can be broke into 25 and 10. 25 being the perfect square. And the square root of 25 is 5. So therefore, the first one simplifies to 5 square roots of 10. All right, now number two, you need to be careful. Remember, you always need to pick the biggest perfect square. Now, 4 would work, but 4 is not the biggest, so we can't use 4. So we're going to need to find the biggest perfect square that goes into 448. And don't forget, you can use a calculator to try to figure that out. Okay? So you could, on your home screen, you could type, you know, the 448 in. And just to show you that 4 works, you know, I could divide by 4. All right, but again, four is not the biggest. So then I could try, well, how about 16? Well, 16 also works, but guess what? 16 is not the biggest. So I believe the biggest is 64. Yep, 64. So that means I can break that down into the square root of 64 and the square root of seven. So my final answer is eight square roots of seven. All right, number three. Remember, we are not allowed to keep a square root in the denominator. So we have to get rid of it. So to get rid of the three, we're going to multiply by one. Now remember, we're not gonna use the actual physical looking number one, we're gonna use the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Technically, that's 1. However, in order to get rid of the square root, we need to use the square root of 3. So the numerator is 12 square roots of 3. And the denominator, now let's think about this. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just Now, we're not done with that one because remember, you always need to see if you can simplify it. Do the 12 and the 3 in the denominator, do they have a GCF? Yes, they do. The GCF is 3. So how many times does 3 go into 12? Four times. Now, we leave the square root of 3 alone, and 3 goes into 3 one time. So our answer is simply 4 square roots of 3. All right, number four. Number four, we're going to need to get rid of the two minus the square root of five in the denominator. So we're going to need to multiply by the discriminant. And if you recall, the discriminant would be the two plus the square root of five. Two plus the square root of five. All right, again, technically we're multiplying by 1 because the numerator and denominator are the same. Now, the numerator, we're going to FOIL. Or not FOIL, we don't need to FOIL the numerator, we just need to distribute. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 4 times the square root of 5 is 4 square roots of 5. Now, on the bottom the denominator, okay, we could FOIL that. But if you recall, this is a difference of two squares. 
So technically, we do not need to worry about the outside and the inside. So we're just going to do the first terms and the last terms. You certainly could do all of it, but those middle terms are going to cancel out. All right, so the first terms are going to give us 4. So the 2 times 2 is the 4. Minus... And 5 times 5, or the square root of 5, times the square root of 5 is 5. Okay, look back at problem number 3 if you need to. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is 5. So the denominator is 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. Now, we can't leave our answer like that because we don't want a denominator of negative 1. So we're going to get rid of that. So what does that mean? That means everything on top gets divided by negative 1. So that means our answer, our final answer, is negative 8 minus 4 square roots of 5. All right. Well, with number four, we kind of got ahead uh, to number five. Number five is just asking, what is the conjugate? Okay, well, that's what we used in number four to help simplify it. So the conjugate for number five is seven minus the square root of two. And again, number six, it says using the difference of squares formula. Okay, now remember the difference of squares formula is what we did with number four. Okay, it looks like this, which is, again, if we foiled it, the O and the I are not necessary. So the first terms give us A squared minus B squared. So that's the difference of squares formula. So really, I have 5 squared minus the square root of 3 squared which is 25 minus 3, or 22. All right. Let's move on. So number 5, we're going to solve the equation, and we're going to find all of the values of x. Remember, quadratics can have up to two answers. All right, so here we go. So we are going to divide, start by dividing by 8. So now we have x squared equals 81. Then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget when you do the square root of both sides, you need to put a positive and negative in front of that. So we have x equals positive or negative square roots of 81. And that gets simplified to simply positive or negative 9. All right, number 6. We're going to start off by adding 13. And we have 3x squared equals 144. Divide by 3, x squared equals 48. Now we can take the square root of both sides. And again, don't forget to put that positive or negative in front of that. And we have x equals positive, negative, square roots of 48. Now, that would be a pretty nice answer. However, it is not simplified. So we always need to make sure we break it down as much as possible. So what perfect square goes into 48? 16. And 16 times what would be 48? That would be 3. So our final answer is positive or negative 4 square roots of 3. All right, number seven, 
two more for this section. Now, we want, again, our goal is to get x by itself. And you will notice that there's an x plus 2 that is inside the parentheses with the x. Okay, we cannot do anything to that plus 2 until we get rid of the plus 4 and the negative 3 in front. You cannot distribute. Do not distribute that negative 3 because the x plus 2 is being squared. You cannot distribute that negative 3 through. So we're going to begin by taking away 4. Then dividing by negative 3, again, do not distribute. Now we get rid of the square, so we're going to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget that plus and minus in front. And we have x plus 2 equals positive or negative square roots of 7. All right, one step left, subtract the 2. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. 7 cannot be simplified any further, so we leave our answer just like that. All right. Number eight. Uh, number eight, we have a five-fourths in front of the parentheses. And again, we cannot distribute. Do not distribute. You can't. All right, so we got to get rid of the five-fourths. So we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. All right, on the left side, the four-fifths and the five-fourths cancel each other out, and we're left with x minus 3 squared equals. All right, if you take 10 times four-fifths, you're going to get 8. All right, square root both sides, put that plus and minus in front, or positive negative. X minus 3 equals positive negative square roots of 8. I'm going to add the 3 to both sides. So X equals 3 plus or minus square roots of 8. Now that is a nice answer, however, that is not the best answer, because the 8 can be broke into the square root of 4 and the square root of 2. So the final answer is 3 plus or minus 2 square roots of 2. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of section 4.5.